Is the information superhighway on the verge of a traffic jam? The Internet of Things promises us a very user-friendly future where our gadgets talk with our other gadgets as well as with us. We estimate that by 2020 there will be 50 billion gadgets connected to the Internet. But that raises a question. How is all of this communication actually happening? And often it's through radio spectrum. But there's a catch with that because only certain radio frequencies are really good at transmitting data. And a lot of those have been allocated for other uses like cell phone towers or radio stations or military radar. Think of the radio spectrum like a highway. You keep adding more and more data. That makes the traffic get snarled. And what do you do? You can't make the highway any wider than it already is. This is what some experts are calling the spectrum crunch. It could be what we're looking at with radio frequency. So does that mean that in the future, when you want to upload a picture from your phone to Tumblr, it's going to take 15 minutes? Not necessarily, because a lot of smart people are working on this problem to avoid the spectrum crunch in little creative, innovative ways. One way is just through creative sharing. Here in the United States, the FCC allocates what spectrum belongs to what task, like broadcast network television. But you might live in an area where that part of the spectrum isn't really used that much, but you are not allowed to use it because it's not allocated to you. This is where cognitive radios could come in handy. Cognitive radios are able to detect unused parts of the spectrum and route data there. Going back to the traffic analogy, it's like a driver seeing an opening in another lane and changing lanes quickly and safely. In this case, that's what the cognitive radio is doing. And when a primary user needs that spectrum back, it can switch back out so that traffic continues to move smoothly and safely. How about a different approach though? How about something called ambient backscatter, which I first thought was a new kind of house music. Turns out that's not what it is at all. Actually, it's a power-free source for radio communication. It actually depends upon the ambient radio waves in the area. A device would be hit by incoming radio waves from a cell tower or broadcast TV tower, and it would absorb some waves and reflect some other waves, creating zeros and ones that become a message to other devices. Researchers at the University of Washington who developed this technology say there are lots of different applications. For instance, let's say you put a sensor on your keys and a sensor in your couch. So when you leave your keys in your couch, your couch can tell you where your keys are. Or for a more serious use, you could have it on bottles of medication. So that way you never forget to take your medicine before you leave the house. We're getting closer and closer to that internet of things and the amazing future of it. But it's really gonna be the internet of people that cooperate and innovate together to make that possibility a reality. So I have a question for all of you out there. What technology do you think needs the most innovation to make the Internet of Things a reality? I want to hear in the comments below. Make sure if you enjoyed this video to hit the like button and be a part of our amazing future by subscribing to the channel. After that, check out these videos over here. You're gonna love them.